everyone, this is Chelsea from Paper Rock Tio Studio, and today I'm sharing my days 7, 8, and 9 index card a day challenge cards. So I actually didn't make anything on day 7, so I'm making two cards on day 8. Day 7, I had to take my kid in to get his wisdom teeth out, and so I was taking care of him all day. So for day 8, and day seven. I am going to be playing with the um, color burst powders and so I wanted to try to do some things with texture. So I started out with light modeling paste and my uh, new favorite stencil and I just um, put some modeling paste through the stencil onto the card and I'm gonna let that dry and while I'm doing that I have this paper doily that I had from I think it's from a hotel where they had used it as a you know to put stuff on and I brought it home and it's been just sitting around um, on my desk so I decided to use a piece of it to create some texture on my second card which will be for day eight so I used paste to stick that together like you do and then I'm drying it and then trimming it out of course to get um, the edges off so that I just have the portion of the doily that needs to be on the paper and now everything is dry so I'm gonna get out my powders these uh, are Ken Oliver color burst powders it's a very highly pigmented water-based stuff in these little things with little squeezy bottles and you can either spray it and put the powder on or you can put the powder on and then spray it or you can make it into watercolor there's a lot of different things you can do with it really intensely colored and uh, they stain your fingers and I keep forgetting to put anything on my hands before I play with them and then I have like blue and green fingers forever <laughs> but they're really cool I I'm absolutely in love with them and I just really would like to play with them constantly but I'm trying to do a lot of different variety on my iCADs so now I'm doing the um, the one that has the doily on it and you can see you couldn't really see the doily before but as I put those on the difference between where that paper is and the background paper is really showing up which I thought turned out really cool so both my little experiments with texture worked really well I'm happy with both of them gave me some great backgrounds and of course I've got to dry these they are completely soaked and they're they're so soaked that the uh, colors coming through on the back as well which is kind of pretty <laughs> and then I'm gonna start working on my day seven I think it's day, yeah day seven card first I'm not sure which one is which at this point I was just doing them both at the same time and this is my uh, plastic bin of things that were living on my desk if you guys have been watching my channel you know that I've been making uh, tags out of things on my desk and so I just have them all on that little bin and things more things keep getting in the bin and I'm not getting things out of the bin very fast <laughs> but this little flower is a paper flower from recollections and I was using it on another project and I sprayed it and then I didn't use it after all so it went in the bin and then that was a piece of scrapbook paper that was already in there so I decided to use it and I trimmed it with some decorative scissors to make a little scallopy edge and then I'm using some washi tapes and those were not on the desk but I just wanted to use some washi tapes on there because I thought it would look nice <laughs> so I do that and I'm I don't trust the tapes of course they're not gonna stick I know they're not gonna stick so I've been I'm putting matte medium under, underneath them and on top of them to make sure that they stay on the card and then with this green one I'm just cutting out a couple little halves of a leaf and then putting them together to make a whole leaf and putting that on for so that my flower will have a leaf that's one of my things I I think flowers should have leaves I don't like them when they don't when they're just flowers floating there with nothing no stems no leaves it bothers me so now I'm gonna glue on my paper flower this is sprayed with tattered angels spray glimmer mist and so it's kinda sparkly but you can't really see it in the video of course video takes away sparkle and then I've got a couple other little scraps and I'm punching them out 
to make a center and I also have a purple button that I'm going to glue on there and I'm putting this little thin ribbon through the button and tying it just for some added interest because there's holes in the button so I thought it would look good with the ribbon tied in it had a little bit of trouble threading it through so it took me longer than I expected <laughs> Then I'm just going to layer all that up. I've got the pink flower and then the orange circle and then the purple button right in the center to finish off my cute little flower. And of course I have an edging issue. Things have to be edged and um, I've been discussing that with several of my friends on YouTube. <laughs> they all seem to have the same issue. <laughs> have to edge these small things. So I used um, archival ink I think it's violet, I can't remember the color, to just go around the edges. And then this is some little stickers from one of the Tim Holtz little sets of words and phrases. And I'm putting those on and then going over them with matte medium to make this sure they stay. Drying that off and then I'm going to edge it with a purple Posca pin and then add some purple splatters with my pen. If you shake those pins like that, they, they make splatters. So that's day number seven's card. And I like how bright and sunshiny it is. So with the other background that I had when I was making these out of the color burst powders, I'm making a different card and I'm edging it with the blue archival ink from Ranger wasn't sure exactly what I was going to do with it first so I decided to just edge it first <laughs> and then I'd figure it out and then as I was looking at the stenciling that that kind of brick looking thing at the bottom it has a wave to it and with that wave plus the colors it seemed to me like it was an ocean and so I decided to make a sailboat to put on my ocean and I grabbed a piece of scrap that had some red and because I thought red looked really nice against that blue and green. That's thallo blue, I mean thallo green and uh, um, oh, cerulean blue I think? I'm not sure. Maybe it's the other blue. Anyway, very intense blue. Still on my fingers. <laughs> so I cut out some different little scraps that were just on the floor actually. I think I told you guys how dis how completely crazy my floor is at this point. I still haven't cleaned it. <laughs> I never have time to clean. I'm too busy making art. <laughs> Excuse me. <coughs> I still have that cold too. So stick everything down with my matte pasty stuff from Liquitex that I like. And because this is water soluble in the background I'm getting a little bit of messy stuff on my sails they're not pristinely white anymore but I'm okay with it it's not really bothering me that much so then I look around for something else to put on the card after I dry it of course and not sure what I'm gonna do but I get out my Stabilo pencil and decide to make some shadows to blend the image into the background a little bit. And then my water barrel brush runs out of water. I have to find some water for it. <laughs> I end up using my drinking water that I have next to me with lemons. So now my uh, water barrel brush is full of lemon water, which is kind of funny. I'm sure it tastes wonderful. I don't, I don't know. But that's what happens when you don't... My other water in my um, bucket of water was really, really dirty. I didn't want to put it in there. This scrap is from the page I made the other day about peanut butter and jelly. And this is one of the peanut butter pieces that were left over. And I just cut a little sunshine out of it. Glue that on. Because it needed something on that other side. And then while that's drying, I get out my white fine tip Posca pen and I start making some details and highlights and things on my boat. And then I do end up kind of filling in my sails because they were no longer pristinely white. I, my dad actually had a sailboat when I was a child and 
the can it had canvas sails it was like this little cheap wooden boat with canvas sails and <laughs> they used to get moldy sometimes like they'd get that mildewy moldy stuff on there and that's what my sails were looking like like they had some mildew or mold so I had to fix that up with my white Posca pen <laughs> they also smelled weird musty weird smells I'd forgotten that till just now. He had a boat. We used to take it out to the dam and float around in the dam with the sails. Huh. Now I have my Faber Castell pit pin and I'm writing some words on there. Come sail away with me. You know, come sail away, come sail away, come sail away with me. That song, that's what was in my head. And then something needed to be on the boat, so I drew a little cat, a little black cat, on the boat. It's not the owl and the pussy cat that went to sea in the beautiful pea green boat, though, because it's a red boat. So it's just a cat, no owl. <laughs> oh, some days. One of my uh, people who watch my videos described my my type of uh, voiceovers the other day perfectly she said it's stream of consciousness narration and <laughs> she's exactly right I just sit here I don't I don't you know make a script or think about what I'm gonna say I just talk <laughs> that's how it goes I don't edit um, unless you know I get a phone call or, s or a really bad coughing fit or something I don't edit I just I just talk it's kinda crazy so this is my day nine card and I'm still sticking with the kind of summer theme I was thinking about camping. I'd like to go camping although it gets really really hot here in the summer and we don't usually camp during that time so we'd need to drive somewhere cooler. We also don't have a cute little camper like this. <laughs> we have a tent. <laughs> Just a tent. But it's kind of fun to just go out in nature and you know be just be so I'm of course making a pencil drawing Ugh. excuse me I don't mean to yawn I'm not that bored <laughs> I guess I'm just a little tired then once I'm done with my pencil drawing which is a 2B graphite metallic um, Mecha metallic mechanical pencil that I like to use it's a soft lead then I'm gonna go over my lines with my Faber Castell pit pins you've seen me do this before recently even <laughs> so I'm sorry if it gets boring but I don't think I should cut it out because I need to show what I'm doing so this is the medium tip is a little bit fatter I'm kinda making some fat lines on there and I've got these very basic trees in the background there's a couple evergreens and a couple deciduous trees three of those I guess and then I have a little campfire going so you can make some s'mores and a little lawn chair there to sit on while you make your s'mores also, this could be a tiny house because my friend Eve and I have been talking about how we should have a tiny house that's just for art. Just an art tiny house with all our art stuff in it. <laughs> because there's no way we could live in a tiny house because our art stuff would take over. <laughs> so, <laughs> this is for you, Twinkie. <laughs> now, I'm going to color it. And... I have got some ink tense pencils to color with and I want to make uh, I want to have the outsides of my images darker than the insides so I draw really hard on the edges and then then blend it with my water barrel brush and if it's not quite dark enough I get an even darker pencil and go around the edges then for the background I'm actually using a baby wipe to blend my ink tense pencils and then going around the images on the outsides and darkening them. I went through a period 
when I was about, oh, I'd say 18, 19, 20, where I was obsessed with coloring in coloring books with crayons. <laughs> Weird, right? Weird. But now all the coloring books are coming out and they're all back and everybody wants to color. I already did my coloring. <laughs> And that's the way I would color is I would draw really hard on the outsides of the lines and then fill in with a lighter color. So that's kind of the look I'm going for. Except for these aren't crayons, they're ink tense pencils. And once you've wetted them and they're dry, they are permanent. So they're kind of interesting pencils. They behave like watercolor pencils, but it's nice and permanent once it's dry. Really dry, you know, not just kind of dry. So I'm just going to do a lot of coloring. Um, if you're enjoying this video, it would re be really great if you would give it a thumbs up. You know, leave me a comment so I know you're here. Subscribe if you haven't already. And share. Pin it to Pinterest or something. And all those things help me out. And you can know when... I have another video if you turn on that little notifications on your subscription it'll tell you it'll notify you I didn't really realize that until recently <laughs> that you can actually get notifications from YouTube I turned some of the, my favorite people on so that I wouldn't miss anything because I'm subscribed to so many people now I have so many friends on YouTube and I've subscribed to everyone that uh, if there's someone I really, really am looking for something, I want I want to be notified that they made the video that I'm really looking for. So I'm still just coloring. Yeah, lots of coloring. <laughs> so I color a little bit and then I blend it with water. Color a little bit more, blend it with water. I've got my little flames going on. I probably should have made a little person, I guess, with a stick with some uh, marshmallows on it. I guess the little person is inside the trailer, or tiny house, whichever you want to call it. Then I'm trying to figure out what color I want to make my trailer, and my initial idea was that I wanted to make it the bottom part turquoise, because I really, I think that's what that some of those trailers look like, like they're white on the top and turquoise on the bottom. But uh, this ink tense does not have any turquoise. There's no turquoise. That is a huge oversight. <laughs> How could you not have turquoise? I mean, I, I know they have turquoise. I just don't have it in this set is what I'm saying. So I decided to make it red and white instead, which actually is better for the composition anyway because there's so much green and blue on the card already that it would have really looked kind of bleh if I'd colored it turquoise. But I really wanted to color it turquoise. So to, to uh, make the white stand out, um, there's also not a gray pencil in this set, which there should be that too. I used my Stabilo All pencil, the black one, and just like really used a lot of water to blend it out so that it wasn't pure black. If that makes sense. Black Stabilo plus water equals gray. And I've just got just about got everything colored and then I'm gonna dry it a little bit to make sure everything's super dry and then I got my white fine tip Posca pen and I'm doing highlights and details because you do. I made the little windows kind of uh, yellowy, goldy color to make it look like it was warm and bright inside. Then I'm just writing some words with my black Posca. Let's go camping. So I'm just about done with this card and that's going to be it for me. And so thanks for watching. Bye bye. <laughs>